great to all in the master's name of our lord and savior jesus christ and it is a great privilege in our life to come together one more time hallelujah amen god has added in our life and we are coming to the presence of god to worship the lord and also to hear and listen the word of god hallelujah so this morning i am so uh, happy to introduce our guest speaker uh, today reverend dijo uh, john from new delhi india and uh, you know he is a he is a profound teacher of the word of god and uh, i'm so glad to say that uh, uh, dear piju john sir he is my teacher when i was studying in uh, grace bible college haryana so currently he is the i mean senior pastor of uh, uh, harvest mission uh, church and the harvest mission uh, college uh, which is located in noida uh, delhi so uh, today we are uh, very much privileged to have pastor piju john with us and let's uh, let's sit in the presence of god with a prayerful attitude so that uh, god may speak to us this morning uh, through the man of god through the servant of god and uh, i mean uh, uh, and let us all put our hands together and welcome dear uh, man of god uh, dear uh, biju sir uh, in our midst and uh, he is going to speak the word of god let's all sit in the presence of god with a prayerful attitude let's all put our hands together i mean for pastor biju john hallelujah praise god praise god hallelujah thank you uh praise the lord everyone and uh, hope you can listen me this uh, morning can i have a shake or thumbs up if you can listen yes. me properly okay, okay thank you very much thank you pastor sam for inviting me for uh, speaking to your church in this morning and uh, of course it is night here where i live and uh, thank god for each one of your lives and he keeps you and that's uh, safe and sound especially in this pandemic situations uh our situations surroundings are not so good for us and uh, the situations are getting worse every day but we trust in god for our lives and uh, we as we walk our pilgrimage here on this earth and uh, i wanted to thank god for pastor sam and his ministry especially the lord used to see him and uh, as he was ministering in india and then he traveled to the states and as he's the pastor of the church here today and uh, praise god for the way that the lord is uh, uh, leading him and his family over there and uh, thank god for the church and the church is you know that is the body of christ that is the pleasure of god amen thank god for each one of your lives as you serve god and love god and grow in christ this morning as the time is given to me i am very well aware of the on the period and the duration that i have here in this morning to speak to you from god's word and this god's word here and the title that i would like to give it here the spiritual seasons uh rather it is a question it's it's a question for every one of us to look into is there any thing such as called as spiritual seasons of course uh, we know there are many seasons uh, uh in the world and the places that where we live and uh, maybe it's a summer out there or or a, or a spring out there or even a winter Well, what are the seasons that we have it around our nature and our world and each of the season has got its own purposes of course there is a season for uh, cultivation there is a season for uh, harvest you know time to take the uh, harvest and both cultivation and both planting and harvesting do not happen at the same time as a if you are familiar with the harvesting and the planting and all you know for from planting to harvest there is a certain amount of time there is a certain amount of period people have to wait farmers have to wait so if you are a farmer i planted the weeds or even the rice on your paddy field you know that it takes almost four and a half months even five months a period of waiting until you take the result of your labor that you have planted 
five months back, four months back. So both these seasons are not the same. So there is a planting season and there is a harvesting season. But my question this morning for us as the church to evaluate is this. Do we have a particular season to be fruit bearing? Is there anything such as cold, a favorable time, a happy moment, or a time that where we say that this is the best opportunity for me to be fruitful? Can we separate a time like that? That is what we are going to look into the scripture. For a passage, I would like to read it from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. I would like to read it for you. We feel a personal responsibility, Paul says this one to the church at Thessalonica. We feel a personal responsibility to continually be thanking God for you. Our spiritual family, every time we pray. And we have every reason to do so because your faith is growing marvelously beyond measure. The unselfish love each of you share for one another is increasing and overflowing. What Apostle Paul says here to the church at Thessalonica is that in the midst of all your situations, they were not in the happy moments of time. They were not the best of their opportunities. The church in Thessalonica, especially in the first century, they were going through such hard times, even for being the witness of Christ, being a witness of Christ. In a very hostile world, the world which is supposed to be simple faults. They were chased after their own lives by the enemies of the gospel. But look at here, the church in it, the church in Thessalonica was flourishing. They were increasing. They were increasing more. They were increasing in the abundance. Their faith was being spread everywhere. So it was the responsibility as an apostle, as a planter of the church in Thessalonica, to thank God on behalf of the church in Thessalonica. I want to come to the point right now here. Is there a time for us to be flourishing? Is there a time for the church to grow? Is there a time very conducive? A time favorable where people will think that this would be the opportunity for me to grow. My brothers and sisters, we don't have a season. We don't have an opportunity. Every day, all the time, is our opportunity. If you are a true Christian, if you are a true believer in Christ Jesus. So the spiritual progress, the spiritual life, you and I are on the journey. There is not ever a moment that we can hold it back. What I am trying to say this, this morning is this message. There is not a time that for us to relax. There is not a time that for us to hold this back and say that this is not the time for me. Or this is not a time for me to take the further steps in my journey. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say this morning to the church. Brothers and sisters, that we are always to be on the upward journey. We are all, we are all, we are called to be fruit bearing Christians. You know why Jesus called the church? He called the disciples. When you come to the 50th chapter of Gospel of John, the famous chapter where Jesus says that, I have called you, I have separated you, that you go and bear your fruit. One what season? Huh, no season. Every season. 
every opportunity, every walk of life. You are to be a fruit, fruit bearing Christian. Not only you bear the fruit, Jesus said, your fruits will always remain and must remain. So when you are called, there is a purpose for your calling. If you and I understand the purpose of my call, the purpose of my God's divine appointment for me, or the destiny for me to fulfill, is to be a fruit-bearing Christian, a fruit-bearing individual, a fruit-bearing disciple. Your fruits remain, and you always remind the fruits, and your fruits always remind it. How you and I can do that one? You and I can do a uh, uh, not a seasonal person or a not a seasonal Christian on occasionally bear fruits. No, we are bearing fruits all the time. How you and I can do that one? The scripture see the scripture gives us for that, and the scripture talks to us that way. And the, uh, the, 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 the word of God gives us the, the message or the scripture to us that we are to be. With Christ, we are to be abiding in Christ. We are to be living in Christ. And that we will have to make our pathways very conducive for us to be a fruit bearing Christians. Jesus was a baby boy when he was born into the world. As the son of Mary, a little baby born into the world. We find in Gospel of Luke chapter 2 verse 40 and in verse 51 the growth, the development of Jesus. He was growing in wisdom. He was growing in stature. He was growing in understanding. John chapter 1 verse 4 says that as many as received him to them that he gave the authority the exousia, the authority to become the children of God. You and I are born into the family of God. You and I are born as the children of God, sons and daughters of God. There is a purpose for God making you as a member of the family of divine, our family of God, a member of the of that family. What is the purpose of that one? Always remain in a crown? Always remain as a little babe? No. There is the purpose of God that you are to grow. You are to grow every day. You are to grow on every season. Because there is a purpose of God to be fruitful in your life. My brothers and sisters who are listening to me in this morning, under the church, one of you stress this point here. You are called to develop into maturity, into the full stature, so that you would be able to produce inner fruits, and that fruits will remain with you. How to be spiritually mature? The Bible talks to us in First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. We are to put away all the childish things of life. You can never grow. You can never grow as a little baby and all the childish ways of life if you are stuck with that. We are all grown up people. At least a couple of children are here in my nation. All who are listening here. As a child, you know that when we were children, as a little child, we behaved, we went, and that we did all those that belongs to a childish character, a childish nature. But as the years have passed, as the time is gone, as the period of gone, we know that we were developing, we were maturing into something, an adulthood, or into a young life. And from there, we didn't stop there. We continue to grow. We continue to grow in the manhood. 
Our prescription stops with that. We are to be growing in the perfect stature. By the way, let me talk to you this one. When Apostle Paul was talking to the church of the Ephesians, Paul talks about the fivefold ministry and the fivefold ministry that he has given to the church. God has given to the church, you know, as an apostle, as a pastor, or as a prophet. As, as a teacher, as an evangelist, and those ministry he has given, God has given to the church to make the saints perfect and to make the church perfect and to make the disciple perfect and to grow them into full stature as a full manhood life. So the purpose of your pastor in your church as the purpose of your prophet in your church or a teacher in your church there is a ministry that they are perfecting the church they are perfecting the saints they are perfecting the believers they are perfecting the disciples into a full stature you know by the way Paul talks in that letter says that we are to grow into a full stature and to the head like Christ full measurement like Christ when you and I, I regularly talk this one, when you and I stand before the throne of God in the heavens, the measurement rod will be brought out and that each one of us will be measured according to our growth here on this earth. And the measurement and that measuring rod is Christ himself. But today we compare our virtues with other fellow Christians. As a pastor, I compare myself with another pastor or another servant of God. But let me tell you, all that measuring rod that I measure here on this earth are faulty measuring rods. They are not perfect measuring rods. As, as an individual, as a human, and not perfect. If you're going to compare your life with me, if you're going to compare, if my, if my church is going to compare their lives or the believer is going to compare their lives with me as a pastor, they are measuring with a faulty measurement, a faulty road. But that is not the case with Christ. When we measure our verses against the range of Christ, you put Christ on one side and you put yours on the other side. You stand and measure your life in the road of Christ, the scale of Christ. Then there you get the perfect measurement where you stand in that road, in that line. My brothers and sisters, you and I are to aim. You and I are to grow into that stature all seasons and every season. When Jesus was talking in the parable of the, uh, sorry, in the Sermon on the Mount, in the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, and the last stewards, you know what did Jesus say? Your heavenly Father is perfect. You shall be perfect just like your heavenly Father is perfect. What is he calling to? What is he calling to? He's calling us to be to that measuring road. Nothing less than that. Nothing less than that. My brothers and sisters, putting away all our childish nature. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 20. Paul says here, by cultivating an understanding. You and I have to cultivate an understanding. You know, where we are standing, who we are, where we stand, what we do. If you know, you will never stop growing. If you know you are in Christ, if you know where you stand, if you know what is your position, you will never ever stagnate. You will never ever stop where you are, but rather you will always pressing forward. Just like the Apostle Paul says, it is not just I hold it, or I, I, I have attained it. You know, Paul says, after a quarter of a century, life with Christ, journey with Christ, Almost 25 years of his ministry, journey, missionary, an apostle, church planter, as a motivator, as, as God is dealing with this man, Paul, even to go into the third heaven, hearing sounds, 
not more than a man. Even that man says, it is not that I have attained, or it is not that I have, I have taken it perfectly. Rather, I press forward. I press forward. Hope you understand what I am trying to say this morning. My brothers and sisters, we can never stop growing. We can never stop in Christ, but rather press on and growing in it. We can strive after Christ's ideas. We can, we can grow in the nature of Christ. The perfect example that we have, we have it, is Christ. He, 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 is coming, he is coming to this world, the perfect image of God. Why did Christ come into this world? He came to, he came to save us. He came to give us his life to us. But he is also an example for us. He is an example for the church. For what? It, to follow the ideals. To follow the life. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13. That's the passage that I was saying it. We have to grow under the stature of Christ. You will have to partake of the deep, deeper truths of the gospel. Not only basic, not only standing in the line of truth. Not only standing on the elementary principles of life. You know, the writer to the Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14. You know, the writer was saying, do not stay in the elementary principles. Do not always get enrolled in the elementary school. Uh, when I say that one, it's a, it's a funny side for us. You know, year after year, we go and enroll our life in the elementary school. Think about a person. For the last 10 years, you have never graduated from the elementary. You have never graduated from the primary sections. You always rather like to go into the primary sections. You know why people like, like to go into the primary uh, sections? The rooms, the stories, and the little things that we can't get in the primary section. But when you grow out of that one, no, there are hard ways. There are hard truths of life. The deeper truths of life. That is what Hebrews, the writer to the Hebrews says that. Pass on. Get out of elementary positions. Get out of elementary school. You are not year after year go back, back and forth into the same school, into the same class. Brothers and sisters, you are listening to me. I don't know how many years of Christianity, how many years of, of life you have with Christ. Maybe you are a fresh Christian. Or you, if, if you are a seasoned Christian or, or a recent Christian. Or you are a, you know, a traditional Christian. Tradition means you, know, you have been a Christian for a long time. But you will have to think about your life. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? You go, come and go forth in the elementary same sections? Or rather, you press every year. Every, every day you press to the next section. Praise God for your life. We are to grow. We are to grow. You know the spiritual developments that we have it. You know the spiritual developments that we have it. We have to grow in fruitfulness. Second Peter chapter 9 verse 10. Apostle Paul was saying this one. I would like to read this passage for you. The generous God who supplies abundant seed for the farmer, which becomes bread for our means, is even more extravagant towards you. First he supplies every need, plus more. Then he multiplies the seed as you sow it, so that the harvest of your generosity will grow. What does the Apostle Paul say here? You know that you are to sow the seed so that the seed will multiply. So the multiplication has to take place. What does it mean, multiplication? Fruitfulness. You have to be fruitful. You only plant the seed. You only plant the little tiny seed into the ground. But as that seed bugs, and the seed is taking growth, it, it becomes green, and it becomes the trunk, and it has the branches, and on those branches, it has multiplied fruits. Oh, brothers and sisters, as a farmer, as he takes the seed, 
and that that becomes the bread for the meal. It is not only a little growth, but the explosion towards our lives. He supplies every need, and even he, he, he even supplies more for his own lives and for the rest of the world. So that you have to be fruitful. You have to be fruitful. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Paul says it here. But instead, we will remain strong and always sincere in our love as we express the truth. All our directions and ministries will flow from Christ and lead us deeper into Him. The anointed head of His body, the church. What do we have here? That we had to grow and we had to go and lead ourselves deeper into Him. Let me ask you this question How do you know Christ? How much do you know Christ? How far do you know Christ? Let me take your attention to Paul. He was almost towards the end of his life in the Roman prison. As I said before, a quarter of a century he lived with Christ. I don't know if there was any other person in the history of the church who ever knew Christ so much. Who tried to follow the ideals of Christ like Apostle Paul. But this man, when he was writing the letter to Philippians, Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, you know what is the desire of this man? He says that I may know him. Oh, what does it Paul say here? That I may know Christ. I may know him. A man who lived almost 25 years. A man who traveled wide and far, preaching the gospel, establishing churches, mentoring missionaries and, and leaders of the church. A man who was instrumental in writing not less than 30, chapter, 30 books of the New Testament. A man who since spent so much. He says, towards the end of his life, he knew that he, was, he had only a few more days to leave here on this earth. But even the world to collapse. This man's message is this. I may know Christ. I may know Christ. Brothers and sisters, never ever stop knowing Christ. Never ever stop. Because the season, this is not the season. Never ever stop. Not because this is not favorable to me. Circumstances are not favorable to me. If that was the case, Paul could have easily forgotten Christ. But his life, he has only one purpose, only one mission in his life. I may know Christ and make him known. I may know Christ and make him known. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12, Paul again says this one to the church in Thessalonica, that may the Lord increase your love and build all of us towards one another and for all people, just as our love all flows towards you. You know that we had to develop, we had to grow in love. We have to grow in fruitfulness. We have to grow into the deeper level of Christ, knowledge of Christ, knowing Christ. And then we have to grow in love. As Apostle Paul says to Thessalonians, just as our love overflows towards you. You have to grow. You have to overflow towards one another. And for all people, your love has to overflow. You have to grow into Perfections. Let me go further because my time is running very fast. What's the, what's the, the writer to the Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Now is the time for us to progress beyond the basic message of Christ. I was talking about the elementary principles of uh, Christianity or Christian work. Here Paul or the writer to the Hebrews says here, now is the time for us to progress. Now, now, I would like to paraphrase that one and say this one. Now is the time to change your gear. 
Brothers and sisters, now is the time to change your view for the upward moment. Progress beyond the basic message of Christ and advance into perfection. The foundation has already been laid for us to build upon, turning away from our dead works to embrace faith in God. Oh. Turning away from all our dead deeds, dead works. Embrace the faith in God. Praise God. You and I, tonight in God's presence, we are not holding on to, we are not holding on to the basic things, but rather we are pressing on to the message of Christ. Amen. Let me go further. When Peter was writing the letter to the church, First Peter chapter 2 verse 2, it says here, in the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, you must intensely cry for the spiritual milk of God's word. For this milk will cause you to grow in the maturity, fully nourished and strong for life. Oh, what a great assurance and great ascension to our hearts in this morning. That we have the word of God. That we have the word of God which causes that we will be spiritually growing into maturity and fully nourished with a strong life. The same Peter, the same apostle, when he was writing the second epistle of Peter, chapter 1, verses 4, sorry, 5 to 7, you know, Paul, Peter was saying, you know, you keep on abiding. You keep on joining. What do you have to keep on joining? You have, you have began with your faith. So devote your verses to lavishly supplementing your faith with goodness. And your goodness and understanding. And to understanding our strength of self-control. And the self-control, patient, patient endurance. And the patient endurance, our godliness. And the one godliness, mercy towards your brothers and sisters. And to mercy towards others, our unending love. Where is all it begins? Where it, where it all begins? It all bega began with our faith in Christ. It all began with our journey from faith. But never ever stop in that, in that crossing. Never ever stop in that, in, in that department. The department of faith. But you have to keep on adding. You have to keep on accumulating. What is that? Here, Apostle Peter says here, lavishly supplement your faith with goodness. Lavishly supplement. Yes, keep on adding. Keep on adding to your faith with goodness. And your goodness to the understanding. And to the understanding strength of self-control. And to the self-control that you keep on adding. Patient endurance. And to the patient endurance that you will add to add godliness. The godly nature. Under the godliness that you will add to add mercy, unto mercy that you will add to all the love, the unending love. Let me let me talk to you for a second. What is your Christian life? All of us say, all of us confess this one because I confess Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe in Christ, my faith in Christ. Well, that is true. But Christian life is a journey from love, journey from faith to love. Christian life is the journey from faith to love. How much is how much is the journey from faith to love? You began with faith, but where are you going to stop? Where are you going to end it? Where are you going to put the capstone? That is in love. What is love? The Bible talks to us. The Bible says, love, God is love. You began in faith. And then your journey you began. Every step as a little baby that you are taking. And the journey is culminating. It's going to end in love. So Christian life is the life of growth. Christian life is going from faith on. It's not stopping in faith. It's not pushing in faith. 
it is keep on growing in it. Let me talk a perfect example from the Old Testament. I know my time is coming to an end. You know, in the Old Testament, that we have a classic example. How can you and I be growing under all circumstances? In the book of Numbers, we have the story of a couple of ringleaders rebelling against Moses and Aaron. Moses and Aaron, they were leading the people into their promised land. All the 600,000 people. You know, they were taken into the promised land from Egypt. But on the way, on the journey, you can find in the 16th chapter, the gang of Korah, Abina, and Nathan, they turned a ringleaders, rebelled against the leadership of Moses. They begin to question Moses and say that, are you the only person who can come into the presence of God? Are you the only person whom God speaks? Are you the one God can minister to you and that you minister to us? It's the kind of, they are rebellion out, resulted out of jealousy. Their, their rebellion was resulted out of their grumblings, their murmuring. They murmured against Moses and Aaron. Because Moses and Aaron, they were the people listening from God and ministering to the body, ministering to the whole congregation. But now, Korah and his company have rebelled against God. That is in the 16th chapter. But when it comes to the 17th chapter, you know, Moses came to God. Moses is complaining to God. Moses says, God, why should I hear all this grumbling? Why should I bear with all this men who rebel against you, rebel against your leadership in the body? God wanted to comfort Moses and Aaron. God said this solution. Now, Ask the each tribe, there were 12 tribes, each tribe to bring a road into the presence of God. Bring a road into the tabernacle. And they will bring that road and give it in your hand that you bring the road into the tabernacle and before the covenant box. The mercy seat. You know, Moses brought road from each tribe. When it came from the tribe of Levi, God said, take it from the house of Aaron, or Aaron's road. So now, with Aaron's road from the tribe of Levi, and the rest of the 11 tribes, they gave a road to Moses to place it before God in the tabernacle. Now what is happening It It kept for a day, when it came for the next day, when it came the next day, what happened? I'm reading from Numbers chapter 17, verse 8. Look at Numbers chapter 17, verse 8. The next day, Moses entered the tent and saw that the Aaron staff, which represented the tribe of Levi, had not only sprouted, but had better blossomed and produced almonds. Listen to me for a second. All these roads collected from the 12 tribes, including Aaron's road, they were all dried roads. They were not fresh roads. You know this people, they were a shepherding tribe. The people of Israel. They were, they, they were kind of nomads now. They are wandering in the wilderness. It is not unusual for the head of the families to have a road. That was almost like a sign of authority. You can find in almost all the stories in the Old Testament. People holding the road, the leadership holding the road. So the road, the road represented and came before the throne of God, where those roads in the hands of the people for many days, even perhaps months or years, this road was with the people. That means these roads were cut out of the branches of the tree long time ago. Now those roads were dried, 
Now those roads, roads did not have life in them. No possibility of burning. No possibility of blossoming, not even to produce fruit. Now what is happening here? The next day, overnight a, overnight a miracle is happening. It Overnight, something unusual is happening with the road of heaven. What is happening here? Here now, it sprouted, it burned, it blossomed. I did not stop there. My brother, listen to me very carefully. It sprouted, it budded, it blossomed, did not stop there, but it produced almonds, it produced fruits within a night, within a day. Look at the Lord again. Listen to me carefully. The Lord was blind. It was cut out of the branch. It was cut out of the wood long time ago. There was no chance of life. There was no chance of living. Brothers and sisters, if you're listening to me this morning, let me talk to you clearly. There is no time perfect for you to burn. There is no time perfect for you to blossom. There is no perfect time for you to burn. No perfect time for you to produce fruit. Every time, every moment, every season is your time to blossom. Every season is your season to produce fruit. If you do not produce fruit in this pandemic situations, I'm afraid about it. When we can have fruits in our Christian world or Christian lives. I've seen Christians, I've seen Christians many times who complain about their circumstances who complain about those situations. They say, Pastor, I understand, you know, the new situation, my situation is so bad. It is not so conducive for me. It is not helping me at all. Nobody is there to come and help me, not even to say a good word. Not even anybody to encourage me. No words of comfort coming from any side. My brothers and sisters, if any one of you going through situations like that in this pandemic season, when things are not going good for you, maybe you are losing job, maybe you are laid off, you are on a furlough, maybe things are not getting better, even with your family, maybe families are not talking to each other, children are not obeying you, children are not going outside, they don't listen to you. Those friends you trusted, they have turned their backs on you. Are you a person that? And if you come to God, let me assure you this morning, this is your season, this is your time to blossom, this is your time, this is your opportunity. Don't wait for the right time. Don't wait for an opportunity time to blossom and be fruitful. Let me, let me talk to you what Jesus was doing when he, he was here on this earth. One day he and his disciples were walking through a field. He saw a fruit bearing tree. But when he came to the tree, he looked into the tree. And the gospel says that was not the season. That was not the season of the tree to produce fruit. But even then Jesus looked into the tree, hoping to have one one little fruit, but he could not find it. What did he do with that tree? Did he say that I will wait for the next season so that I can pass by this one and look into it? Did not do it. The tree was cursed. The tree was cursed as born a couple of days back when the disciples came back to that, to that road. They saw a dry tree there. A dry tree there. Brothers and sisters, there is no season, there is no time opportunity so that you can be fruitful. Every day, seven days, 31 days, a whole month, 365 or 66 days, the whole year, 12 months are our time for us to be fruitful. Let me finish with this one. There are a few conditions for us to be fruitful. Number one condition, we have to be connected to the living water. 
If you are a king, you need always draw the water. You need to always have it, that water coming through your roots into the branches so that you will have a green leaf. Number two, you should have a spiritual receptivity. You know the story Jesus told the parable of a sowing man, a man who went into his soul. Some fell on the rocky ground, some fell on among the bushes, some fell on the roadside, but some fell on a good ground, prepared ground, a receptive ground. There the fruits was there the fruit bird, it was 30, 60, and 100 fold. The fruit bearing, it needs to be a spiritual receptivity. You need to die to your old self. You cannot be a fruit bearing Christian if you are holding on to the dead deeds of your lives. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, we need to be pruning, we need to be prone, and we need to be chiseled. So that the branches will bear more fruit. You need to allow your life to be chiseled. Of course, I know they are not pleasure experience. They are not good experience when the farmer comes with the scissors to prune. It's cutting. It's removing. It's cleaning. Always it's cleaning. But remember, if you refuse, if you refuse the chiseling of the farmer, if you refi refuse the pruning of the farmer, you cannot produce fruit. But allow, they allow the pruning of God. Finally, let me talk to this one and finish it here. You need to be abiding in Christ. If you abide, Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 15 again, if you abide in me, you will bear fruit. If you abide in me, abiding in Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters, let me ask you this question again. Is there a season? Is there a season for us to be fruit bearing? I would say all the seasons of time, all the walks of life, whether good or bad, whether favorable or unfavorable, whether somebody is there to stand with us or not, all the times as a Christian, I had to bear fruit. I had to show for the character of Christ. May the Lord bless you tonight as you meditate on God's word. Do not stop this message here. Ponder over it. Think over it. Am I am a Christian growing. Am I a Christian bearing fruit in all walks of my life. Whatever may be my circumstances. Whatever may be my situations around. Big thoughts come. Famine comes. But that would be my opportunity. This pandemic season is not going to hold me. Yes, coronavirus is not going to hold me. COVID-19 is not going to hold me. No job is not going to hold me. Friends forsake me. That is not going to hold me. But I will be a forbearing Christian. I will always be bearing Christians. God bless you. Thank you once again for inviting me, dear church. God bless you, Pastor Sam, and the rest of the family. God bless you again. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for uh, uh, I mean, in, I mean, accepting our in invitation and coming and joining with us and uh, uh, sharing the word of God with us. And uh, uh, your, your zeal and your passion is appreciated, you know, uh, in preaching the gospel and preaching the message of God. Hallelujah. So we are so thankful to you for, uh, I mean, coming and joining with us and uh, preaching the word of God in this morning. And uh, uh, we would like to uh, thank you and we would like to uh, 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 pray for you and for your ministry and your family. And before that, uh, uh, Sister Joby is going to pray now. Just before that, let me uh, summarize the, the, the word of God. Let me summarize the message of God uh, that we were hearing uh, from the servant of God this morning. You know, let's all close our eyes in the presence of God and let's pray. Hallelujah. Let's all close our eyes in the presence of God. Let's, amen. Summit ourselves with the mighty hand of God according to the word of God which we have been hearing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The servant of God, I mean, was, I mean, talking about, uh, I mean, how, what is the spiritual season? Is there any spiritual season? Or uh, are we are able to, I mean, I mean, be fruitful for the name of God? the Lord uh, in season and out of season. Hallelujah. So let us all I mean, come to the presence of God uh, with that burden that the Lord, uh, I need that uh, passion to be fruitful I mean, for the name of the Lord in the coming days. Hallelujah. Thank you Pastor for reminding 
I mean, about uh, the responsibility of a, of a Christian, hallelujah. And we are reminded about uh, the spiritual, I mean, maturity, hallelujah. And we are reminded about uh, the spiritual growth, hallelujah. And we are to be fruitful in season and out of season, hallelujah. Let us go forward and be fruitful for the name of the Lord in the coming days, hallelujah. I mean, there are many things which is hindering us, hallelujah. But when we trust in the Lord and when we, I mean, allow God and when we abide in Christ, the hallelujah, the presence of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit will, I mean, help us to go forward and do the ministry of the Lord and be fruitful for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we are the tree, I mean, planted by God, I mean, in the vineyard of God. Hallelujah. And God is expecting the fruit from, I mean, every tree. Hallelujah. Every believer is a tree and God is expecting the great things from each one of us. Hallelujah. I mean, we are supposed to bear fruits for the name of the Lord. Lord, hallelujah. And to, to, to do that, let us know, I mean, Christ through our experience. Hallelujah. Let us know Christ through our experience. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says that, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. So let us grow in maturity and the holiness of God. And let us know Jesus Christ, our God, I mean, through our experience and let us trust in the Lord. Let us have faith in the Lord. And hallelujah, praise God. And, you know, I mean, we have, we have been hearing about, I mean, the people of Israel. They were grumbling. They were murmuring against Moses and Aaron and God. Hallelujah. But remember that we are not the people to be, I mean, I mean, murmur. We are not supposed to murmur against God. We are not supposed to murmur against the leaders. But we are to be submitted in the hands of God, to be fruitful for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, most of the time we are waiting for the opportunity to come in our life but we are i mean i mean expected to be i mean abide in christ always when we abide in christ always i mean god will help us to be fruitful for the name of the lord hallelujah so there is no season for the fruitfulness and i mean in, in season and in out of season anytime we will be able to i mean i mean do the work of god we'll be able to be fruitful and bear fruit for the name of the Lord, for the expansion of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So let us all submit also with the mighty hand of God. Let us pray for, uh, I mean, uh, pray for Pastor uh, Biju John his, and his family. And also let us pray for the blessing of the Harvest Mission Church and uh, uh, Harvest Mission College also. And let's bring their ministry in the mighty hand of God, that, that God may bless them uh, abundantly in the coming days also. And uh, I mean, God may bless every one of us to be abide in Christ in the coming days. Hallelujah.